Hello, everyone. You are listening to Empowered with Lauren, and I am your host, Lauren. We have a great show today. Joining us is Rebecca Fleetwood Hessian. She is the CEO and founder of We Thrive Dot Live. This is a company designed for the purpose to ban burnout and build community. She has nearly three decades of experience in leadership team building, and consultative selling. She also has a TEDx talk on ADHD. She is an author, keynote speaker, and this one is my favorite. She is the founder of the Badass Women's Council. This is a place where women surround themselves with other badass women. She also is a podcast host of a show called the Badass Women's Council. Council. Welcome, Rebecca. How are you? Hey, I'm great. Thanks. What an amazing introduction. I'm, I hope I can. I live love up to that. that intro. <laughs> <laughs> Rebecca, we have so much to talk about, and I have to say, there are so many people out there, and so many women that talk about celebrating other women, or they write, or they put on their LinkedIn profile that that's what they do, and then if you reach out, all you end up hearing are crickets. That means you hear nothing. (laughs) You truly have built your career on building up other women, giving them the tools for them to shine, and you celebrate their success. And thank you for being here. Oh, you bet. Thanks for having me. I, I I am now passionate about that. You know, ironically, decades ago, early in my career, I wasn't a huge fan of women's programming. I, I, I've evolved dramatically because in the beginning, I had a couple of not so great experiences and you've alluded to that as well. And yes. I, I, through, you know, I was able to thankfully get steered in a different direction and now passionately and wholeheartedly engaged to, to raise other women up. So, yeah. I think a lot of women, unfortunately, throughout our careers have encountered that. And I think it's impressive that the women that have had those things happen can actually dust themselves off, regroup. And if they get into a position or a senior position, and then they turn around and say, you know what, I don't want to be one of those women. Mm -hmm. I want to break that. And if we can't stand for one another, what do we expect you know, men to do when we're dealing, if we're breaking each other down. Can we talk a little bit about how did we thrive dot live start and what was your, and did it change for the initial mission and where you are now with that? You know, it did. When I first launched into my own company, I was doing consulting work for anyone, coaching, consulting, and my process was working really well. But I had a couple of personal experiences that really honed in on this, uh, women supporting women. One of them was when I gave my notice, I I spent uh, several decades successfully with the Franklin Covey organization, and I actually gave a six-month notice because I had an extensive book of business and things that needed to be sorted out. And the day I gave my six-month notice, I hung up the phone and I thought, okay, yay me, you've, you know, you've launched out and made the first step in creating this career for yourself, but also uh, entrepreneur, uh, that means you're alone now. And right. then the second Which is daunting. That I thought, it it's is daunting. daunting. It is. You, know, you, you get excited and then you're like, oh. And even though I'd worked in a home office, I didn't go to an office every day, I went to my client sites, I also had this epiphany that my really tight career relationship friends were all over the world, but none of them lived down the street. So I didn't have someone that cared about their career and was doing some of the kind of work that I wanted to be doing and had been doing. I didn't have anyone in my local community that I was really tight with. You know, I had friends that came from a lot of different aspects of my my life, high school friends and people that lived all over. But I thought, I need people down the street where as this thing gets hard, which I knew it would, I can pick up the phone and say, hey, meet me for coffee or a glass of wine. I'd love to share some things I'm working on and get your feedback. 
And so, you know, I had that, that thought of, okay, well, I got to go find me some friends. <laughs> and, <laughs> I got to put myself and, out in ad. <laughs> yeah. And, and by the way, at the time I was, you know, 48 years old. So it was really an interesting, just boom, it hit me in the face. So it's exactly what I did. I started looking around in my local community and having conversations with people and sharing what I was planning on doing with my business and ultimately put together this group of seven women, including myself. Some of them I, I knew of, some of them were referrals. One I met on Instagram for crying out loud, all, all kinds of crazy ways and that God brought us together. And I, I was blown away the first meeting that we had. I said, hey, let's just all get together and support each other in our businesses. And I was blown away by how quickly we all recognized, even in that first meeting, how much we needed that kind of community. We didn't know we needed it until all of a sudden we were looking in each other's faces going, yeah, this is, this is exactly what I needed, but I didn't know to ask for it. I didn't know it's what I needed. And powerful. so that experience, That's yeah. And that experience, we've been together for over two years now, that experience really started to open my eyes to the high achieving career woman. So as I was doing work broadly with men, women, all, all, all companies, I started to just pay attention and ask good questions to these women and started to formulate some hypotheses around their needs. And, and that's really how it honed in on this, um, this women supporting women. And so now you've, do, you've done something called Rise and Thrive, a, the Rise and Thrive experience that you're getting a lot of yeah. momentum with. Talk yeah. to us about that. Yeah. So I built a coaching and consulting process, as I said, that was working really well and uh, really happy with the results. But as I started to look at the needs of these high-achieving women, one of the key things that kept popping up was, this idea of isolation and loneliness, which actually is number three under obesity and smoking for health-related issues, which is an interesting fact. In fact, they, Wait, the the women, UK, that successful, you're saying success, su successful women are suffering, it's number three, that they're suffering from isolation and loneliness. If you're well, a successful just, woman, you have no... It's not just yeah. us. It's, a, it's globally, men and women... For health-related issues, isolation and loneliness is number three under obesity and smoking. In fact, the U.K. has appointed a minister of loneliness to address it in their country. It's a global issue for men and women. But as wow. I started to, yeah, it's fascinating, right? And as I started to interview and pay more attention to high-achieving career women, I recognized this phenomenon of we have normalized busy and we're so careful to take care of everyone else that the first person that we're going to leave off the list to manage our business and to manage everything is ourselves. And so we unintentionally isolated ourselves. We didn't even know it was happening. And if you were to go out and, and talk to a career woman today and say, are you lonely? She'd say, absolutely not. I'm surrounded by people all the time. And she wouldn't identify as lonely. But when you start to ask some clarifying questions about the satisfaction in their life, you realize that they don't really, like I did the day that I gave my notice, we don't really have those kinds of connections where we can completely be ourselves because we're either running the division or the company. We've got a lot of people that report to us. Our family's looking to us for support. But who are those people that we can sit down and really open up our hearts in our vulnerabilities, both in life and business. And when you start asking it from that perspective, all of them that I ran into in a pretty short period of time were like, yeah, so either the list is short so or true. I just don't have those people. Right. And so right. that was one of the issues that I wanted to, to address was to build community for high achieving women with their peers, those same kinds of people that said, I do care about my career unapologetically. So that was one issue I wanted to solve. The other issue I wanted to solve is the World Health Organization put out a report last year on burnout, and the statistics are pretty staggering. And so I, I sat down one day at a big harvest table in Starbucks down the street, and I laid out all of the data. And as I laid out the data, I realized that my process could handle about two-thirds of what I was reading about 
But I quickly realized that I also had business partners, had other coaches and other folks that were doing great work that could handle the other areas that I couldn't. And so I just started laying this thing out, and I knew I wanted transformation, not training. I'd been in the training world for decades, and I wanted something that was deeper and, and had more sustainability and longevity to it. So I laid out this program that is seven months long. It covers seven particular topics, everything from health, energy, and wellness, mindset, strategy, execution, leadership presence, fashion, brand styling, the whole gamut of a, a career women's needs. And I put together a team of seven coaches, including myself, and we bring seven women into this experience, and it's been profound. So every month we get together with, oh, it is so, so amazing. The results have been just staggering. So every month we get together on a particular topic, but then we also have one-on-one sessions in between. And then it all culminates into a big event where these seven women stand on a stage in a theater full of 150 people and they tell their story in a seven minutes kind of Ted like talk about their transfer, their transformation and their journey over this seven months as they rise and thrive. Wow. And how do you find these seven women? Like how do you pick (laughs) these women? Uh, the first go round of anything that you're building from scratch that hasn't been done before is m- mostly a lot of prayer and hope and affirmations. But um, I just started talking to people about my vision for this and, and what it was about. And because it's one of those things that you don't recognize that you need it until somebody talks about it, I started to get a fair amount of, of buzz about it in, in Indianapolis where we launched And the right people started coming my way. And I would just one-on-one interview each one, some some characteristics that I was looking for. And it was interesting. Some people, as I interviewed them, would say, I know I need this, but I'm not ready to open myself up yet. Like they they self-recognized that they needed it, but they just weren't there yet. Because they didn't want to see what they were were lacking or... Okay, and, and that um, was the vulnerability yeah. that they knew they had to then act on something and actually do a tangible action plan when if it was brought in, if it was in the light, if it was actually brought right into their yeah. face. They weren't, right. they weren't ready to stand in that light yet. Some people but that's came power in, for, in itself, right? Well, yeah, like, absolutely. Don't you think, if you could say, yeah, I know where I'm at, I know that I'm not ready to digest it, I'm not ready to handle it, and the work will be so much greater when you are ready, right? Mm-hmm. Isn't, that, isn't that the yeah. first step empowering and owning your own stuff? And just in that interview, there were some things that came out that they knew that they could do to prepare themselves. It wasn't that they were going to run off and hide and never be ready, but they said, you know, here are a couple of things that I know I need to address, and then I think I'll be ready. So yeah, just the interview in and of itself was, was really helpful for them, and it helped me in terms of just diagnosing needs and how I was going to handle those ongoing Some people came into the experience really wanting the business impact. They wanted to take their business to the next level, and they knew that a group of high-achieving women could could help them do that. Some came for more personal reasons. Well, because I would think here you have this huge uh, track record in team, you know, team building and building mm-hmm. brands. And so I could see that people would want to come in if you're a high-achieving businesswoman and you're trying, you're kind of creating this roadmap for them. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. Now on a, on an emotional side or on a, a spiritual journey or a wellness side, did you get the same type of unbelievable, um, I'd say transformation or growth that you did with getting the results on the business side for these women? It has been breathtaking and just wow. blowing me away. One of them left me a message last week, just raw and real in tears and, and said, I came into this experience wanting to improve my business and it has literally saved my life. And she had just buried a lot of things that she didn't want to deal with in her life under the guise of busy with her business. It's her own business that she runs a very successful multimillion dollar business. And she said, I've been hiding from my, from the world for 16 years. 
And I wow. just, just, I justified it by saying I was busy. I was building a business. She said, but now I realize that I don't have to give up myself to be successful. And I'm, I'm, I'm allowing myself to trust and step into the love and care of this group in ways that she had never anticipated, but had she's dramatically prob- impacted her life. Which is now, she's actually, Rebecca, you're giving her a key to actually, I think, finding herself. It sounds that there was an image of her in this corporate major, uh, you know, uh, leader in business, but maybe she never knew who she really was mm-hmm. and what she feels as a woman. And you're giving her the permission to experience that and, and be surrounded with other women that are going to fuel that part of her, which is a very powerful, powerful thing for a woman that could be in her mid forties, late forties and never feel that. Mm-hmm. And it's never know beautiful. that. Yeah. Um, what about women that you could you say would could that are don't have these busy careers, don't have these successful careers, but want that? Could they come and do this with you as well, and maybe find what their fire is? I have other solutions that are geared toward that person, that woman more so. This this group, this seven month experience, really is for someone that's at. Uh, a pretty high level in their organization. Um, but I have other, right, we use the same content, the, the, the Thrive content, but allows them their peer group. Um, yes, we also I have understand. some programs like Dare to Lead uh, from Brene Brown that we offer. So we have a variety of solutions that meet some, some specific needs. We've got the Badass Women's Council community that people can come in and and, and get some free content and some paid content. So we, we meet people where they are, but Rise and Thrive really is that um, executive level career woman. That executive career woman, when we speak about her being lonely or isolated, even though she's surrounded by people, it's the absolute worst feeling. And I remember having that feeling. I lived in New York City for over 20 years And I remember vividly numerous times when I was a Wall Street trader on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange, and I was surrounded by 5,000 people. I mean, 98% of them were male. But I remember sitting and thinking to myself, who do I have to sit and speak with about what I'm feeling and what's going on? And I remember being like, how terrible this feels to be so alone. I also remember the transition of me saying, I want to trade in this corporate wardrobe and I want to be an entrepreneur. And I remember the day I was walking on the street and I had my bag of all my stuff in my hands. And I remember saying to myself, and actually not saying it to myself, saying it out loud, oh my God, I did it. Tears were rolling out of my, my eyes. I was laughing. I was crying. But the fear of, oh, my God, I, I actually did it. Now what? Now where am I going? I had this, this, this intention, but I now had to make this intention come to fruition. And who was I going to speak about it with? And that was really daunting to me. And so I understand when you say, you can have friends, but if they're not like-minded or doing what you're doing or not having that community, it's scary. And I think that you cultivating this community is unbelievable. Um, I'd love you to talk a little bit with us about the difference between striving versus thriving. Mm-hmm. I know you speak a lot about that. Yeah. I think it's important. Yeah, it's one of my favorite topics. So thriving actually comes from the root word strife, which means battle, conflict, stress. And we use it as a moniker of success. I'm going to strive to hit that goal. I'm going to strive to get that career. But if we're left feeling like it's been a battle to do it, it means we're not doing it from that place of thriving. Striving means that I've allowed that external marker of success to define me. So, example, when I left my career at Franklin Covey, I had been a badass there. I'd sold $35 million. I had 
innovations that were in best-selling business books. I had an ear to the CEO. I had traveled with Dr. Stephen Co R. Covey uh, on a couple of occasions and shared the stage with him. Like, for everything about that career was amazing. And the, the last day after that six months notice, I closed my laptop. I looked around my home office and I was pissed because there was no ticker tape parade outside my, my neighborhood. <laughs> there was, you know, there was no call at exactly 5 PM from the CEO. Now I had had six months of goodbyes and accolades and thank yous. And are you sure you don't want to stay? They had been nothing but wonderful to me, but all of a sudden it was like, who am it was I? Over. Right. Who am I without that? Like I wanted my own business. I wanted to explore what I had to offer. But who am I outside of that? What am I going to do when I can't say I'm in the President's Club at Franklin Covey? I work for the best-selling thought leader of all time. But who am I without that external aspect of success? So it's, it's a little bit of that locus of control, internal or, or external, right? And so if I didn't have that leverage of high brand awareness, did I know who I was? And I, I poured myself a really, really deep, tall glass of wine with the full intent of having my own little pity party by myself at the counter in my kitchen. And within a couple of and minutes, And there's nothing I thought, wrong with that, by the way. Nothing <laughs> wrong once nothing in a while to have one of those. <laughs> and, and then I realized, Rebecca, this is the point. This is the message that you're carrying with you in your business is never let a company, a role, or some external marker, marker of success truly define who you are. Should you accomplish those things? Absolutely. I plan on making tons of money and doing amazing things in my business, but I will always do it from a place of thriving. Thriving is different. Thrive means to grow, prosper, and flourish. It means to create the conditions by which I can grow, prosper, and flourish. That means I know who I am. And so I take people through an, a discovery of who are you? What are your unique gifts? talents and abilities, and how are you using those to grow, prosper, and flourish? That way, if you decide to pick them up and take them to another company or another cause, you don't define yourself from that external company and role that you've been in. You pick up who you are and you carry on. And it doesn't mean you start over. So if you have a rich career for five years, even a couple years, 10 years, whatever, and you go to a new place, you don't start over. You brought your unique gifts, talents, and experiences with you to this new place. And then it allows yes. us to have this sense of courage and confidence to take whatever we're great at and use it for good and in whatever way makes sense for us. Love it. I absolutely love it. Never thought of it that way. It's interesting because I always say, like, I'm striving for, and it's all there's a goal. There's always a... Uh, there's a light, right? And so mm -hmm. you're right. If you if you're striving and you keep striving and you're left exhausted, then you're not thriving. Very interesting. I like and that angle. A, I like it. That's that's an exact test that I ask people. I say, okay, so there's a huge difference between falling in bed at the end of the day, exhausted from striving, versus falling in bed at the end of the day, exhausted from thriving. One gives you energy, and you can't wait to get up and do it again. You're tired. You've worked hard. We're wired to work hard as high-achieving women. But when you've worked hard at something that, that is external, it's not really who, it's not using our unique gifts and talents, or, or it's fleeting and short-lived. You think about those times that you've achieved a goal that you've worked really hard at, and the next day you're like, okay. Now what? You've got a little bit of that hangover, right? It's like the, now what? Whereas thriving, you say, yep, not only did I achieve that, but I know how I achieved it by using my unique gifts and talent, and now I'm ready to take it to the next level. What do you got for me next? Rebecca, that is such an interesting perspective, one that has been foreign to me my whole life, yet it does make sense. So here I am, this extremely competitive athletic person that's very driven and I treat sports the way I treat business and vice versa and I've always thought that if I wasn't crushing it if I wasn't dripping sweat or if I wasn't completely exhausted then I didn't push hard enough 
then I didn't work hard enough. And when I'm thinking about what you're saying, maybe I need to reevaluate and say, Lauren, you're just not working smartly. You are expending too much energy and you are depleting everything that you have and you're not possibly thriving the way you should be. I need to sit with that. I need to let that resonate. It makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. And too often when I start working with with women and these are these are women who have achieved some stuff like you like me these are you know these are not slackers and i'll ask them okay let's list your unique gifts and talents and abilities and they look at me with this slow blink and a long pause and finally they might say something like well i'm a good mom i'm like well that's a role that you play you should keep doing that what else and then they'll another long pause and then they'll say well i'm a good marketing executive or I'm a good, you know, I'm like, well, that's a role that you play. What is it that makes you good at these things? And peeling back to get these women to really identify who they are and what makes them great. To me, it's about, thriving is about intentionality. It's about, I know I'm going to achieve that goal because I'm going to use these gifts and talents. I'm going to surround myself with other people and their gifts and talents to achieve that instead of just white knuckling it through and working my tail off and being exhausted and then getting there and going, now what do you got? It's it's more about the intention of knowing how you got there, why it's important. Well, I guess that's also loving that journey, right? You're taking Mm -hmm. this journey and you want to kind of, when they say smell the flowers along the way, and it's not just about the end game, it's about what you did getting there. But what do you say to women? And I think I suffer from this. And I think a lot of women um, that are successful can suffer from this, that when is enough enough and when do you celebrate and when do you think that, uh, like an A-type personality, um, mm-hmm. or someone that is always striving. And I always believe like, and I tell people, if you give up, a, you always want to keep setting new goals because if you stop doing that, then you, 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 I'm scared of ever of living in a complacent life. I, yeah. I never want to feel that. So I think though, I go to the extreme and I know others that do that the constant wheel of striving is is that's that fire burning that it's never enough and I have to do more. But that's where that then leads to, I think, the burnout that you're talking mm-hmm. about. Yeah, it is. And not knowing why you're doing it. And I'll give you two examples. One of them is one of the people in Rise and Thrive. She's a CEO of a tech startup. She has three boys, two of them twins, under the age of eight. And her husband travels. Her life is as full as it gets. Right. She cares deeply about getting results. She's, you know, it's it's just all in, right? And so she also cares about her health. She was, you know, going to her workout, you know, several mornings a week, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., just couldn't let anything drop. And one of the coaches in Rise and Thrive is a health coach and sat down with her and said, let's look at this. Is that workout fueling you in a, in a beautiful, joyful, wonderful way? Or is it another thing on your list that you're afraid to let go of out of uh, a duty and responsibility? If it's not giving you some sense of joy at some point, you probably need the sleep more than you need the workout and started to look at how some of those intense workouts too many days in a row were actually actually causing her sense of fatigue that wasn't to break allowing down her to thrive right. to you know, thrive is to 100%. create the conditions by which you can grow but yet if you're a high achiever you're like nope this is what I got to do and once we backed her off of some of those workouts and changed a few things and, and had her, I have a concept called soul food. What's going to feed your soul today? Had her go into some things that were more fun and joyful and taking more breaks. It's been a significant change in not only her health, but her results. 
So we can take that too far to where we're not building ourselves up. We're breaking ourselves down. We're breaking ourselves down. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's a very important thing. I mean, that's something I need to live to to think about is, yes, when you are goal-driven and you're extremely intense, what is the difference between fueling yourself and driving yourself where you break yourself down? Well, I'm a runner. I love I love to run, but I have to ask myself, am I going out to run because I'm going to get joy and relief and leave some of the stress of the challenges of the day on the pavement today? Or am I going because I said I was going to run five miles and I don't do it and then what pace do I need to be in? Am I tracking that? And blah, blah, blah. Like some days I need to just put in a kick and playlist and just run a couple of miles because it gives me joy and do it intentionally instead of out of obligation or compliance or some rigor that I think I'm a failure if I don't. Right. It's giving your, giving yourself the permission. Mm-hmm. Let me give you one more example of the difference between striving drive, because I think this is an important one. Another one of the gals in my experience she, we list, you know, her unique gifts and talents. And I, and I went in one day for her one-on-one coaching session and she said, you know what, I'm really struggling. I, I may have to leave this organization, which I hadn't seen coming at all. And I said, oh, well, that's different. What's going on? And she explained some of the challenges she had with her team and, and she had really moved her role completely away from her unique gifts and talents to handle some issues that she had in the organization. And I said, well, why, why isn't this person doing it? You know, I pointed to a different role and title in her organization. She said, well, this is really important to, to what we're trying to accomplish. I said, well, just because it's important doesn't mean you have to be the one doing it. You should be leading it. So we redirected her day-to-day responsibilities back to the things that she was uniquely gifted and talented in and put the other things into the role, back to the person that, that was better equipped in, for those. And within a few days, she called me and she was like, oh, my gosh, that was exactly what I needed. I feel like a different person. When we violate our unique gifts and talents and we try to do a role or a job that's not who we really are, we get that sense of striving and we can do it for a period of time, but it doesn't leave us filled up. It leaves us depleted. The more we align our work to who we are uniquely, the more we get into a mode of thriving. I think that's powerful. What what can we tell our listeners? What can you say that they could walk away three tangible actions that they should think of or write down where they could feel that they are thriving, not striving? You bet. First one is acknowledging, recognizing, I'm giving them all from all of you permission that we're all a little uncertain and afraid. Every freaking one of us. So the minute you feel that, acknowledge that everybody has it. It's part of our neuroscience wiring to keep us safe, but it shouldn't hold us back from what we really want to accomplish. So step one, yes, we all have what I call the little bitch in our head that, that, that is saying, I don't know if we should do that. You should probably, like, that's okay. It's normal. Everybody has it. So step into uncertainty knowing it's part of the game. Number two, embrace uncertainty. Yes. Yeah. Embrace uncertainty. Number two, sit down and and work on listing your unique gifts and talents. What are those things that you know you're good at? You love to do them. It gives you a sense of joy and satisfaction. Example, I'm a great connector. If I meet you, I can tell you three people that you should talk to that will make your life better. I'm good. I'm going to hold you to that. No. Yes, I, I'm annoyingly positive. <laughs> um, I can take any situation and help us find the bright light in it. So it doesn't have to be like I'm a, I'm a cello player in the symphony. It can really be personality, characteristics, abilities that, that you're good at. List those out. And then ask yourself each day, each week as you're planning your work, am I using these gifts intentionally? Look for ways that you're using them and the impact that they're, you're getting back from them. And the, and the third thing is allow yourself to be curious. We think that we have to just find this career, rock it out, however long. Like, try some different things. Experiment with your career a little bit. The more curious we are about how we might use our gifts and talents, that's how we start to uncover 
true meaning, purpose, and calling is by trying some different things and seeing what worked well, what didn't work so well, and not feeling like we have to have it all figured out every day. I think that's power in itself. Mm-hmm. It's also oh, we can do a whole the, episode on that. Uh, <laughs> that's 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 huge. Uh, it's giving mm-hmm. you the permission, a to try something and fail, but you tried it, and it's to it, and if you you don't know what's going to inspire you, what's going to bring this bright light of oh my god, this is it. If you don't try mm-hmm. it, right? So Absolutely. I think so many people they stay in their safety zone. They stay in their their little box. It's Step mm-hmm. outside your comfort zone. Step and outside that box. I had some box. crazy experience early in my career that has absolutely helped me today. You know, I was a bartender and waitress at the very first MTV Spring Break. Like I did me some too, crazy baby. Stuff. I was a bar. I think bartending was a huge <laughs> thing to me. It was. A, it was an awesome. Oh, I mean, yeah. I can think of all the times I've been on the floor of the exchange when the market. I remember when the market hit ten thousand. I mean, we had crazy positions yet. Nothing stressed me out more where I didn't know about pressure that the day that I was bartending behind the South Street Seaport in a bar, that the entire restaurant was filled. It was a Friday afternoon, and it was my first day by myself behind the bar, and there was about 300 people. There was, it was standing room only, Rebecca, and the, 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 the tab, the – the sheets from the computer were wrapped around a in a bar, bar three times because they all wanted frozen drinks. Sweat was dripping down my armpits and my face. I, I just like I wanted to just get up and walk out. I've yeah. never been more stressed in my whole life than being behind that bar. With everything that's gone on, I've been on national TV live numerous times. Nothing ever made me more step outside my comfort zone than being behind that bar. I get it. Absolutely. And the resilience and the ability, you know, grace under pressure, hospitality under pressure. You learn that at that moment, right? So all of the experiences that we have, as crazy as they may sound later, prepare us and teach us and inform us about what we're really good at and what we're ultimately here to do on this planet. A hundred percent. And you take, you extrapolate the things that you love to do. And the best thing is to combine your passions and make money doing something you love. Yeah. I think absolutely. that's just, I mean, amazing. Talk to us about how people can sign up to be a part of the Badass Women's Council. Yeah. So or get information. To, you bet. So the podcast is called the Badass Women's Council. I'd love for you to listen, subscribe. You can also join the online community. It's Badass Women's Council dot community and you fill out a little bit of a questionnaire and somebody reviews that to see if you qualify and really we're just looking to to make sure it's you know career women looking to inspire other and empower other women that's a great way to to engage and another thing that i would um, encourage people to do is dream more allow yourself to just dream about what your life's going to be and this being the start of a new decade is a great time to do that so i created this PDF free download that walks you through a few exercises just to sit down with a journal and a glass of wine and dream a little. So if you go to my website, we thrive.live and pop in your email address, you can download that document. And I think you'll find it really inspiring and helpful. I love it. Three things to walk away for with step into an uncertainty list, unique talents, allow yourself to be curious. And a bonus one is, Dream more and keep mm-hmm. drinking that wine. Or, yeah, you know, that's I've never heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What else? Yeah. What's the one last thing we can tell our listeners? Because I think it's so important that if each woman, whether you're in business, whether you're successful, whether you're not, whether you're trying to get into business, but just to build the community of women embracing and supporting other women, what can you tell our listeners that? That because if each one of them did one thing that would support or embrace another woman, what would you tell them? Just look for them. They're 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 all around you. Just look for them and say, "How can I help you? 
I'd love, I'd love to do, you know, have a conversation. I, if you invite a woman to coffee to engage in a conversation, another career woman, there's a high probability that she was hoping you'd ask and she has something to share and that you can help each other. But we have to be curious and courageous and ask. Be approachable. Be interested. Mm-hmm. Right? right? Wouldn't you say be, be, be curious? Be interested. Be curious. Be curious yes. about her. Be curious about her career. Don't assume. She may have well, she may have resting bitch face, right? So maybe she just got that look <laughs> on her face. <laughs> but we don't, don't like us- resting bitch faces. Ooh. I have it. I can't read my own. No, you head don't. And I start I, thinking I, you know, you know. and I'm like, uh, but don't assume that you know her story. Don't ever assume that you know her story. Be curious about her, reach out, engage, and I promise you that you'll be pleasantly surprised that, one, your stories are probably more similar than you think, and that she was probably hoping that you'd invite and ask her, and she's been looking for a place to share her story, and now you've given her, given her that opportunity. See, that I like. That I like a Me lot. I, first off, you can never assume anything. When they say when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. Yep. Um, Amen. And that you never know what someone's story is. And so mm-hmm. the more that we are open to one another, the more we're going to learn and the more we're going to build one each other up. And I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm a big believer, and that's what I love, and I've been attracted to things with what you've been doing is a powerful – uh, empowered woman celebrates the success of other women, complimenting other women, telling them how proud you are of them. Even if it's a stranger, saying something that's nice to a stranger, it's just building women up. And that makes them, then they're not having that resting bitch face. Then people will walk around more with a smile and a smile is contagious. If you smile at someone, Rebecca, are they going to smile back at you? Absolutely. The reciprocity is real, right? And and you know what? When you think about that woman's story, and, and if you don't assume and you just open yourself up to be curious about it, the ability to collaborate and support each other feeds both of us, right? It feeds you as much as it feeds her that you took you took the time to to, to do that. It's just it's to me it's never it's never a bad idea. Well, it's also when you're feeling, when you're saying something nice, think about your facial, your facial expression, how you feel inside when you say to somebody, oh, you look beautiful today, or I love your smile, or I'm so interested in the things you do. Very different than saying something nasty, like you're a bitch, or and had, <laughs> look at your face when you say it, right? Now, some people yeah. really are a bitch, <laughs> but... You try, to, you try not to surround yourself with that. You want to surround yourself right. with badass women that are positive, that are supportive, that are elevating one another and stay and, away and, from people that drain you. Absolutely. And, and you think about the comparison in social media. You know, I know you have a lot of passionate opinions about that, but we, it's easy for us to pay, open up our phones on any given day and see someone that's doing something amazing. And, and our first thought could be, well, they're, you know, I'm not good enough. Somebody's already done it or, it's our, you know, they're better than me. Instead, remind yourself that there's something that can be learned from that person's success. And if it can happen for her, it can happen for you. And you don't want her life. You want the unique life that you've been. God has blessed you with gifts and talents that you've been wired with. You don't want somebody else's life. But you, but that comparison, when it creeps in, you've got to snap that off and say, no, I'm going to be inspired by her. I want my own success. And if it can happen for her, it can happen for me. I love that. That's the best thing I think. And you said a lot of fabulous things today, but that's the best thing you said. I, that, I love that. Mm, you're, you're, yes. you're, not inspired, you're, you're not trying to be that person. You're not sitting in a place of jealousy. You're taking what that person has posted or, cre- or that is created, and you say if that's happened for her, A, fabulous for her. I celebrate her. That's not my story, but I can create my story and can have success like her. Or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah. I think that's powerful. Rebecca, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing with us your journey. You definitely gave me, as well as our listeners, some very good food for thought, or as you would say, some good soul food. 
I wish you continued success. And you, girl, you go keep being that badass woman you are. Please go to Rebecca's website at wethrive.live for more info and listen to Rebecca's podcast, the Badass Women's Council podcast. You can find this info on my website, empoweredwithlauren.com, and I always appreciate any and all feedback you have. You can email me at lauren at empoweredwithlauren.com. Wishing each and every one of you an amazing day filled with health, light, peace, and friendship. Until next time.